I'm here with Bob Graham with Southern California Edison. Bob, can you tell me a little bit about the EV program? We're doing everything we possibly can at Southern California Edison to reach out to our constituents, our customers, to provide them information uh, and to help them be wise about getting plug-in vehicle ready. We've got a, a cross-sector team uh, that can arrange up to a, as many as 100 people that are focused on trying to look at the distribution system, education outreach system, and engagement with our communities to help get them the information they need. What do you think is the biggest stumbling block as far as infrastructure to move forward to more EV use? I don't think there's any real stumbling blocks. I think it's an it's a educational issue with consumers. So the consumers who buy the vehicles that meet their driving styles buy a vehicle that, that if it's a bad electric vehicle, they're able to drive the community as they need to, and then the infrastructure becomes a, a, a backup system. Um, I think it's really more of an education. If people are buying the correct vehicle, I don't think there's any issues with plug-in vehicles, and I don't think there's any real issues with infrastructure. It's important to have the right level of infrastructure to support the market, but it's also important not to overbuild the infrastructure as well. Um, what, what is Southern California doing actively to educate not only the consumer, but say businesses regarding EV vehicles? We have a website that we've created. We support web, uh, workshops as we're doing today. We go visit indi with individual cities. We have a team of sales of uh, regional managers in our business commercial group. They're actually calling on, on business customers. We have our call center, which receives millions of calls. We have our call center all trained to be able to respond. We have a what we call a tier three response team that if there's some real technical questions that we can, we'll reach out and respond to any technical questions. We create literature. Uh, with that literature is downloadable off the website. Uh, we work with national organizations like GoElectricDrive.com to try to do whatever we can, again, to get that education outreach as best possible. Are you working with organizations like NECA, the National Electrical Contractors Association, to help educate them on how to install these stations and, like you said, the appropriate number of stations? Yeah, actually that we are. In fact, we have worked with the Department of Energy and the Clean Cities Organization that's, as part of the DOE to develop with NECA an, an actual training video. Um, and in fact, I'm in the training video. So yes, we are, and we work with the, the local ICC chapters. We work with, with UL, who has a training program for, for inspectors and electricians. We work with um, uh, the, some universities who are training the trainers. So yes, we do as much as we possibly can at the electrician level, at the inspector level, to train and provide whatever information we can. Why are events like this morning so important for the region and, and to get the information out? I think two reasons. One, the cities are a conduit and another channel to reach out to their constituents to provide the necessary education and information. And number two, cities are going to be called upon to provide the, an appropriate level of infrastructure. And it's important for them to think through what they need, especially in tough economic times, to properly service their accounts. But bottom line, the most important is the ability for the cities to, to participate in the education outreach because we have a long way to go to move people down this education path. One gentleman, or a question was brought up earlier this morning about Edison's ability to service the demand that the electric vehicles are going to create on the infrastructure. How is Edison, what is Edison doing to be prepared for that extra demand? From a, from a load perspective, the demand perspective, we are not concerned about that. Um, we have plenty of transmission and generation capability. We are concerned about certain points in the distribution system where we see cars coming in to, onto certain circuits. So we are carefully evaluating those circuit, where those circuits are, as we would with any new load, and, being, and moving to make sure that those circuits are upgraded to support this. Because we are now linking with the auto industry, and we're, we're very, very concerned about having customer satisfaction. So, and we also want the grid to remain reliable. But this isn't rocket science. We've done this before. We know how to manage the grid upgrades. It's a matter of getting the information, getting our planners to be engaged, and they are. And what is your relationship with WR Cog, and where do you see that going regarding the EV program? There, and WR Cog is an important component of a regional co of, the, of the regional coalitions that are trying to make sure that the the region is prepared uh, for electric vehicles. Cars travel all over the region, so it, there's no one single isolated location. So our effort with the with the Cog is the fact I heard earlier today. There's this is a very progressive environmental community in this area. So bottom line is there will be a lot of plug-in vehicles in this region. 
we want to work with them and them with us and from a regional planning perspective to make sure that we prepare the region to get ready. And they're part of that education outreach and they're part of that regional planning effort.